Here's Brody Brazil. Hey, welcome back to the channel. I really think you're going to like this video. Thanks for clicking on it. It's all about how to give the best passenger briefing. I mean, after all, these people have jumped in the plane with you. They're trusting you with their lives. And the least you could do is make them feel comfortable before you turn on the engine. You want your briefing to be concise and confident all at the same time. And, and what I'm going to share with you is a great template of what you should say, how you should say it, and maybe even in what order. So feel free to copy all of this. But let me begin with why I'm sharing this. I think this is especially useful for new pilots. Like, you're brand new at this. You never got told what to tell your passengers other than a couple basic things and not in any particular order. So this is going to give you the feel of experience if you deliver it like this. It's also useful for pilots who might fly a lot, but typically not with passengers. Like, who are these people and what do I even tell them? Like, this is a new experience and sensation for you. But it doesn't matter who you are. This is definitely going to add a polish to the flying experience for your passengers. Again, a lot of them have maybe never been in a small plane before. How many times have you heard that? They've got a lot of questions. They're feeling a little bit edgy. For you to deliver this before even starting up the engine, it does set a nice tone to the rest of the flight. Here's a quick summary of all the different areas, the flight overview, seat belts, evacuation, which I hope you don't need. Same thing with fire extinguisher. Definitely don't hope you don't need to talk about or experience air sickness. You'll talk about it, but I hope you don't experience it. About the intercom, about cockpit seating, and always leave time at the very end for questions. And even if there's no questions, you can have a silly moment, a humorous moment. You can just make sure that everybody's comfortable. It's a good time for feedback and checking in. Here's how we start it with the flight overview. Hey, everybody. Today, we're flying from Livermore to Las Vegas. I'm making all this up, by the way. And we're anticipating a cruising altitude of 24,000 feet and a total flight time of an hour and 31 minutes. Okay. So it gives everybody an idea. We're going from here to there. If it's a multiple airport city, you might even want to be specific about what airport you'll be flying to. I mean, again, some people don't even know this. They just know they're supposed to be on this plane to go somewhere. Give them the full information. How high we're going to go, that may not matter at all to them, and it shouldn't, but it's a question they might have. And how long is this flight going to be? Always a question that gets that right out of the way. The next question they have, do I have to wear seatbelts? Well, you just continue. And by the way, you do this all in one rip. FAA regulations require all passengers to wear seatbelts during takeoff and landing, but for your safety and my request, please keep them securely fastened at all times. So here's what the rules are. Here's what I prefer and recommend to keep everybody safe. Hopefully that's understandable. Evacuation. In case of an emergency, please familiarize yourself with the exit route and procedures. Two exit doors on this airplane, and here's how to open them. Take this handle, pull it up, push out on the door. That's how you get outside if you need to. There's also a baggage compartment in the back. Just so you know, that's another way to exit the plane if necessary, if applicable. Okay, so you're going to want to just demonstrate that. That's why I have the... The dot, dot, dot right there. Fire extinguisher, a standard fire extinguisher can be found below the passenger seat right here, below my seat, wherever it is. Point to it. Remind them that it's a fire extinguisher just like they're used to. But in the rare event of a fire, we will be expediting a rapid descent. This is standard procedure. Nothing to worry about. Air sickness, please notify me if you feel uncomfortable, including dizzy, lightheaded, or drowsy. Also, please disclose any current medical conditions that may affect judgment or normal health. Again, their lives are in your hands, and if there's anything extra that you should know about them and attention they might need instantly, that would certainly help before the flight. Can I also take this time to give you a little piece of advice? I know I'm running through this, and you want to get it all copied down, but... Always carry a six sack. If you're a competent pilot and you're carrying passengers, whether you're a private, commercial, CFI, doesn't matter your ticket, carry a six sack for passengers. The moment and the five seconds that you have when, when you need to help them from uh, doing what they do, throwing up, uh, you want that six sack to be able to catch as much 
of it as you can. Yeah. I'm not going to get too far into this and get too graphic, but you do not want to spend your time cleaning up the inside of an airplane. Okay. So while we're talking about air sickness, that's for you. Have a six sack, have a bag, have a place always ready on your kneeboard, whatever that can be pulled out, handed over and make us make a bad situation, not a really bad situation. Okay. The intercom and your headsets, you're going to hear both air traffic control and our conversation in your headset. But during busy phases of flight, including the taxiing we're about to do, the takeoff, and then eventually an approach and landing into Las Vegas, radio communication for me to air traffic control, that is imperative. So cabin silence is requested at these times. And I'll remind you of that. I just want to let you know in advance, I will need a little bit of silence on your part. During normal flight, you will also likely experience frequent flashing lights and beeping tones. And these screens in front of us, they're going to be quite busy. Don't be alarmed. They're all part of normal flight operations. You don't really think about that, right? But there's a lot of stimulating activity on a panel. If that person's up front or even in the back, just seeing the panel, you don't want something flashing red to distract them or worry them, even though you know it's nothing of a big deal at all. To the passenger in the right front seat, please keep clear of those moving control wheels, uh, the control wheel in front of you and the, and the pedals down on the floor. Those actually control the airplane like I'm doing from over here on the left side or if they're on the left and you're on the right. But to the passenger up front, basically, don't touch any of the controls. That's what you're trying to get across. If you see any other aircraft or concerns in a near vicinity to us, appropriately notify me. Get my attention. I would really appreciate that. And then lastly here, wow, 18 things. Please don't hesitate with any questions along our flight, but are there any questions right now? All right? They'll look around. They won't say anything. They ha have a good joke ready, lighten the mood, and then say, hey, all right, let's go enjoy the flight. And then you do it. It's as simple as that. Now, I know I broke it up with some stories and some advice in between, but if you kind of put that passenger briefing all together, copy it down, make it your own, it's a good place to start in briefing your passengers. I've done it before. I think it goes quite well. If you're a CFI, you're doing demo flights or photo flights. It's just a nice way to start every single flight that you do. So thanks for checking out this video. Thumbs up if it provided you any value. Also subscribe to this channel for more content coming your way just like this.